In a recent video, I showed you how you can add Markdown to your React app. So you can use data from the user or from your files or actually just, you know, hard code it and get it converted from Markdown into rendered HTML within your app. But it was very isolated to where you wrapped your Markdown with the component. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make the entire file Markdown and still add JavaScript. Let me show you. And this is what it would look like. You can see you've got regular markdown but you've also got like imports with javascript so it's super powerful mdx is super awesome and i want to show you how you can do it and then the other benefit is not only is it rendered within your app but it's also rendered on github yes you've got the import here but the rest of it at least is rendered it is so powerful it's a great way to have your documentation within your app so people can get to it straight away you're going to see how straightforward it is let me show you we're going to create a Next.js app and we're going to use the mpx command, create next app, and we'll call the app video Next.js MDX. We will not use TypeScript for this. Um, we won't use ESLint, but I highly recommend that you do use it. And now it's going to create the project for us. What we'll do next is navigate into the new project we have just created and we'll open our favorite editor, VS Code. And this is a regular Next.js app. And you'll see in index.js, we have got our regular kind of default app that's created. So let's start it. I always recommend before making any changes to npm run dev and let's see the app. So let's now delete the in contents of the entire file and we'll write some markdown. So here we can say this is italic text and this is bold. And you can see straight away that it's not very happy about it because it's a JS file. So what we'll do is we'll change it to an MDX file. And it looks a little bit happier now, but it's not going to render it. So what we need to do, if we go to the official Next.js documentation, they tell you to install Next MDX Loader and MDX React. So let's just grab that and let's install that. We'll need to stop the app and let's install those dependencies. And while that's running, let me take you through the next part. The only last step that we need to do, right, we're almost there, is it configure Next.js to load that. So you'll see what we'll do is we'll require the MDX, and that's, you know, obvious. And then the extensions that we're going to use, so we're going to look for the MDX file extension. These are options that you can add. So you can add various plugins if you want to. We're going to keep it super vanilla for now. And then the page extensions are, you've got the default ones, and you can also extend this further. And Next.js has amazing documentation on this so you can see that it affects all the Next.js pages. So it's something to think about. Now let's finish installing. We're not going to run it just yet. Let's grab this config that we spoke about and you can see it's in the next config.js file. So let's open that and we'll paste in the new configuration and you can tweak this and customize this as much as you want. Let's start the app and let's see what we get. So we are expecting this to be in italic and this to be in bold. So let's have a look. And as you can see, it's quite small, so we make it bigger. This is italic and this is bold. And you can still import components. So say, for example, we wanted to create a component. So let's make a new folder. And if we call it components, and then in there, we'll create a new React component. We can say my component. I can't seem to spell components. That's going to have the JS extension. And then here we can export default function my component. I'm not going to pass any parameters. And here we can return a p tag, which says something like this is my component. So we hit save. And then we can go to our MDX file that's just got Markdown in it. And it's being rendered within our Next.js app. And we can import my component from components. I suppose it right that time, my components. And here at the end, we can then, you know, use the component as we normally would. So we'd say my component and it would be self-closing. So hit save, got an error. I spelt my component wrong. So let me just remove the S. Here we go, hit save. And you can see this text has come from my index.mdx file, but this is my component hasn't. It's come from a regular React component. So now you can see you can combine the two. So you're not putting Markdown within a specific area within your page. You're actually making your, kind of your page, whole page Markdown, which is, I think, super interesting and awesome. So let me know what you try if you use this in your project. And you don't have to use it for every file. So you can still have a regular J 
MDS file if you want as well. The great thing is this is super flexible. It will just look for the MDX files to render those and leaves all your other files alone. So let me know what you create and what you plan to do. But like I said, this is really awesome for documentation. We are bringing this to the link free projects. If you want to look at the real world example, go to our link free project It's currently in a documentation branch at the moment. Um, and then you will see, like I said before, in the pages where your standard files would go, we've got a docs folder and these are MDX and all being rendered out with, on the website, just like any other page would be, which is pretty awesome. But they are, like I said, got lots of markdown in them. And if we switch to the code, you can see markdown and react as well. And we've even got a layout here as well. So there's just so many awesome things that you can do. I look forward to geeking out with you in our Discord between live streams and YouTube videos. Link in the description below. And while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already.